industry, you'd have a tough time we saying that. Ute. <laughs> and, and we will have a rock climbing wall. So, is that right? <laughs> you know, we'll be doing, I don't know if I'll be the first. We'll well, how big is the facility right now, the youth canteen? Well, well it's just, I don't know the square, square feet, probably, if that, probably less. So yeah. you're tripling the amount of space now that the, the local youth can actually use in order to go ahead and take advantage of. Right. And that'll be, we have a, a arrangements with both Buchanan and Croton for their shared services on an occasional basis. And I would assume that uh, we have a number of rooms in there. We might be able to use it for other purposes other than, you know, just teenagers or young folks. And just in the recent, let's say, past two, three years, I know there was a, uh, the youth, uh, I should say, the travel soccer team uses the facility over at the Sproutbrook uh, uh, facility, we'll call it. Uh, right. That was a new travel. I happen to know because my 12-year-old plays there right now for the town of Coralie. I know the impact has helped alleviate some of the over uh, overage over on the Blue Mountain field and the uh, Furnace Woods fields that are located in the back of there because I know many of the in-house soccer and programs use those f those fields. So right. anything helps. But uh, has there anything else? I mean, I know you've had even another roller skating rink, uh, a basketball court in the meantime that are over off of Westbrook Drive. Oh, that we uh, that's a in um, skateboarding. Park. Skateboard we park. Skateboarding park. We put up some basketball courts uh, with the help of a developer off of Croton Avenue. Mm -hmm. We have our Q, which stands for Cortland Upper Teen Education Center, which is located in the Cortland Town Center. That's been uh, going on for, I think, three or four years now, oh. where Fridays and Saturday nights, if you're a teenager, you want to come in and shoot a game of pool, play a game of chess, oh, watch some right? TV. You can hang out there for an hour, then go to the movies. Now, is this in conjunction with the teen center down in Montrose, or you just no, felt... No, it's just, uh, just another oh, facility another that facility. we do, we do have. Uh, you know, it's funny because many people don't realize, I mean, naturally, if you're from Cortland, you've been in there a couple of years, you should know, but there are many newcomers to the area. Right. And, and geographically, Cortland is kind of a tough thing because if you looked at the Hudson River and took Peekskill like a little C of a pocket, Cortland just literally envelopes or, or wraps right around. Right. So it is kind of a diverse area. It's not just a one set homogenous uh, zone. So, oh, Cortland. No, yeah, for no. Cortland, exactly. So it is kind of tough that it's almost like when you make a plan, it's not just one. You have to almost make two, sometimes three facilities in order to suffice where you're, the residents of the town are. So it right. makes it difficult at some, kind, right. some, some point. Well, yeah. Which is behooves Portland and Peekskill to get along. Peekskill <laughs> is a downtown without a suburbia, and we're a suburbia without a, a downtown. downtown. Exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, technology and local government. Uh, your background is in the. You're a former IBMer, or yes, still an yeah, IBMer? No, uh, yes, that's right. Uh, so you, this is your expertise, we should say. Yeah, I, I, that's right. My original, a good part of my career was in IT with. Uh, AT&T and IBM amongst others. Now, for the last couple of years, I've been interested in financial planning and decided to turn pro. So I joined MetLife, ah. which used to be an old school insurance company, but now is a full line yeah, expanded firm. Into and uh, sure. having a ball doing that. Yeah. But with regard to local government for a number of years, uh, just by default, by virtue of the background, I got involved in sprucing up our technology in a number of ways. Uh, and I'm glad to see, and I'm, actually I'm happy to see, that over the last couple of years I haven't been involved as much because I think uh, myself and the whole slew of people who actively got interested in technology, we have, mm -hmm. we have a, uh, I think, a town government technology that easily is comparable to corporation its size of 200 people in a $35 million budget. So you know, we have we do document scanning in our clerks and controllers department. So you talk about just just a straight upgrade with all the systems that they use compared yeah. to what it was, let's say, 10, 15 years ago, oh, let's yeah, say, where they still were doing hand checks on when the checks were coming in as far as who paid their taxes, who didn't. Oh, exactly. Uh, so so it's, 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 it, you've upgraded that much. Oh, websites chock full of stuff. We have using GIS capability. People can go into our website and through GIS, couple of clicks, see their own parcel of land, click on it, get information. Uh, you can pay many of your bills 
through the website. You can sign up for recreation and pay through the now, website. We don't want to take too much credit away from the supervisor because <laughs> we know how how uh, <laughs> how delicate this may be. But so we got to give you some credit. Let's Just say. a little, a little pochino. <laughs> All righty, uh, let's move on to green initiatives. I know this is a big thing that's happening. It's almost like a uh, throughout the United States, maybe even uh, throughout the world with this. Uh, whether it's a global economy, but also as far as global warming, what's going on, right. uh, green initiatives. What exactly is it? What what what, what does it uh, consist of? Uh, I've heard the term lead certification. Right. Uh, what is lead certification? What exactly well, does lead, that mean? Lead certification. Uh, I wish I knew what it stood for, but it's <laughs> L-E-E-D-S, and it, it it's basically the. Uh, gold standard of what it means for a building or for something to ascribe to certain environmental principles. In fact, uh, what we're doing, we just asked last week the question about it'd be good for us to get an overview from some smart people as to what that entails. But like any standard, it's the standard that people are saying, okay, this standard will change, but right now it's the one and only. Right. Let's see how closely we match it or don't match it, and if we don't match it, why don't we? You know, things like that. Now, where does this go? In other words, are you talking about just the buildings that are in the town of Cortland or even their, their vehicles or as far as anyone building a home or a commercial establishment? Is, does it in, encompass well, everything? Well, or that's, a, a, that's a very good question. I mean, people have been in local government have been talking green and better in the environment, you know, for I guess a number of years. But I would say in the last six months, it's gotten into the serious stage. Yeah, Again, yeah. referenced the price of gasoline, uh, natural gas, you sure. know, electricity. And uh, I think you, you basically have two, two mindsets of people. The people who want to overall, for a global basis, reduce the carbon footprint to, to get the bad things out of the ozone, yeah, right, to right. worry about the Amazon basin. And then you have the folks over here uh, who are really looking to say, okay, you know, I, w I don't want to do green for the sake of green, but I want to save money. Right. You know, and in fact... Sure, reduction yeah. of fuel costs across the board, whether it's air conditioning, gas, fuel, whatever the case may be. And anything you can save or lighting, whatever the case may be, makes it that much cheaper and therefore that much cheaper because it's less to, for that fuel charge or electrical charge or usage, whatever the case may be. Yeah, I started at the, the town council just in January, a monthly, monthly little session, a little four minute session called Go for the Green, mm -hmm. in which I appealed to people like myself who were cheap and lazy <laughs> when it came to the environment and basically had these like one tip a night things where you could save money. For instance, did you know that if you shut off your PC at night, you'd save about the equivalent of uh, $40 a year. 40 or, you know, it'll cost a broadband service free for one month. Because it costs that much to keep that electrical uh, energy usage throughout the night. Well, time. a lot of things that are plugged in are not really asleep, as you might think. Uh, so even money. though the computer screen may be down, there's right. still the, 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 the charging systems or whatever that are being, that are actually still consuming or using well, uh, electrical. Uh, exactly so. So I think it's this <clears throat> little uh, small ball with regard to green that people can play that they can begin to, you know, balance out some of the escalating costs that we're going to see for energy and okay. have seen already. Well, listen, John. That's it. 30 minutes. It goes fast, ah, it's, especially it's a, when, uh, you know, we have so many things to talk about. Uh, we'll welcome you aboard. Uh, we'll, give you, we'll make you the honorary liaison from the town of Cortland for our, uh, maybe a bi-monthly update or a quarterly update. Uh, we thank you for uh, attending tonight. Uh, any questions or comments to John Sloan, you could forward it to the Town of Cortland. Uh, the phone number is up on your screen. It'll be up there pretty soon. Uh, and once again, this is Dominic Volpe, your host for the Volpe Report. Uh, and once again, thank you very much. Any comments, also you can forward it to the Volpe Report at AOL.com. Thank you very much and good night. Okay, good. Very good. As always, a uh, pleasure. <laughs>
Because the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away And I'm proud to be an American 